them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, action. <laughs> I mean, that's good because I haven't, I haven't really gotten started. So, um, so far, all we, you've done. Um, so, screencast people. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, about 10 minutes in, 15 minutes into uh, my <laughs> starting all over again. Um, I'm at the Prism Breakup, Prism Breakup event doing um, how to build a tiny self contained darknet. And right now we're waiting on the ops.image download, which uh, I bet if we all try to download this at once, it's going to make it worse for all of us. This, is, this wasn't really well thought out, this part. Um, so once these files download, um, actually, yeah, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put it on the USB thumb drive. And one of the most frustrating parts of this whole process is opening the package that the USB thumb drive comes in. It's like this shrink wrap thing. <laughs> Um, but I do have a pair of scissors that we can pass around. I don't know if it's possible to open without scissors, so um, maybe I'll just... <laughs> I got it. Oh, you got it open? <laughs> it is possible. It's not fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, maybe that's why they call you claws. <laughs> Trying to figure that out. <laughs> so I just figured out as good as this as you guys are. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so this there's a little tech overview. Um, yeah, I mean, basically... Oh, yeah, and to get to this, I should probably just go back a little bit. To get to this, you just go to occupyhere.org, and it's linked from the top, DIY guide. Cool. So, um, I just realized I don't have a thumb drive to demo on. So this one already has the files on it, but I'll just plug it in so we see them. Oh, and you know what? The, the other router I have already has Occupy here running on it, so I might need to commandeer one of them. <laughs> Uh, sorry about that. Yeah. So this table would be me demoing it. Um, see, so I scroll down. Yeah. Actually, we don't need. I guess yeah. You, if you want to plug in the routers at this point, I think that's fine. So yeah, because it'll take a little bit of time to start up. Yeah. Thanks. So let me check this guy. All right, so I have my thumb drive plugged in here. Um, it has some like default stuff on it that we don't need. I'm actually gonna be safe and just like totally obliterate it. Um, I don't know what they ship on it by default, but I know that we don't want it. <laughs> so, I mean, you don't actually have to reformat it, I should say. You can just delete it and empty the trash. Um, that's totally valid. The way they ship these things, they're formatted with um, a FAT32 single partition, which is what we're going to be using. Um, there's other ways to do this, like you could also partition it with Linux uh, partitions. Um, ext4 is the preferred file system for this. Um, but because we have that, that giant disk image, um, that's going to be our proxy. So we don't actually need, it's a lot more flexible on non-Linux computers um, to work with with FAT32, so that's what we're going to be doing. Okay, so uh, we have this empty disk, and did I, where did my download go? So, I guess that unzipped it right here. Um, I'm just going to take this file, this folder, and drag it to, if I can get there, onto the um, at this point, it's actually useful to point out we need to rename this just occupy dot here. I think I need to add that to these instructions too. I'll try to remember to do that. Um, and then this file, this ops dot image file, once once that finishes downloading, I'm going to be putting that into this data folder. Um, and the reason that I don't ship this like with the download, like it would be more convenient if it all came in one big zip package. GitHub just doesn't allow files over 100 megabytes. 
And really, it shouldn't be versioned anyway. Like, it's kind of a bad idea to store on GitHub. So that's the reason. Um, I, I feel like, uh, like downloading things from downloads, like this, this link here goes to downloads.occupyhere.org. Um, I feel like it's important that I get SSL running on this and that I do stuff like release MD5 patches so you know what you're getting is the actual code. Um, I don't have that set up yet, so um, for now we're just downloading straight from GitHub um, for the release code and then bringing in that ops.image separately. Um, another thing that I should probably mention is that these instructions are all of like a week old and haven't really been tried by anybody. so. Um, this is this is a little bit experimental still. It's still very early stages. Um, I have been working on the project itself for about two years, um, so I feel like I, I have a pretty solid understanding of like how the tech works. But as like a DIY project that other people can do, that's kind of a new phase for the project. Um, so your feedback will be very uh, helpful. Uh, I already I should probably make a note of that. Uh, having to rename the file folder to just plain occupy here is, is important. Um, I didn't really anticipate this download issue. Uh, I mean, maybe maybe what I'll do is just while it's going, I'm going to I'm going to demonstrate how you would actually create it yourself because maybe that's useful. Um, I have an Ubuntu uh, virtual machine that I keep. This is how I actually build Occupy here is in this Ubuntu environment. Um, it turns out that tools for uh, like compiling stuff along the lines of OpenWRT, just, they just work better in Linux. Linux is just way better suited to this. So um, although there are instructions on how to do it on a Mac, like it's possible to do it on a Mac, um, I don't actually recommend it. I think it's, it's kind of like a stretch. Um, so I would, I would recommend just learning VirtualBox, which is a great piece of software. It's free. Um, and you can you can use it to you know if you do web development you can test different versions of IE and stuff you can run Windows whatever you want. Um, so uh, let's see if I can remember how I did this. It was uh, well this is something else I did. This is mounting the, my desktop from the Mac side of it to uh, a folder called shared, which is. Um, which is now here in Ubuntu. So if I look at a uh, shared, so right now I got a lock on. I'm off in the weeds a little bit here. I <laughs> uh, well, basically I'm waiting for this stupid file to download, and I was going to show like how to create the file from scratch instead. Um, but yeah. I, I mean, most people aren't going to want to do this, so maybe this isn't like a great uh, way to use the time. Um, one thing we could do is we could we could kind of skip ahead to um, preparing the, the US. Maybe that's a, a better thing to do right now. Instead, going to the, the Wi-Fi router itself. Um, so while, while ops.image is still downloading, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, navigate the um, Chinese language firmware, which um, it's actually not as hard as it might sound. Um, so. Actually, the first thing we're going to do is we're ultimately we're going to want to load this IP address 192.168.1.1. This is kind of like the default address for a lot of routers. Um, so you may find yourself interacting with it a lot as you're doing these kinds of tutorials. Um, to get to that, so there's this there's a chance that you're on a, a Wi-Fi network. Like right now, I'm on the IBM network. Um, the IBM network may be this subnet, this 192.168 subnet. And that causes a problem, because if that's the case, if, if IBM happens to have that as its network address space, um, we're not going to be able to get to 192.168.1.1, because someone else already has that. That's like the typical address for whatever the internet connection comes from. Um, so one thing we're going to have to do is turn off the Wi-Fi, uh, which is going to cut off our download. This is uh, <laughs> this is what I call it out. Do you want to put that off file on the external drive? Yeah, maybe that's the thing to do because I have a copy. The thing is that my copy of it has files on it. Like, um, but yeah, if I if I generate one here, maybe that's the thing to do. And then okay, yeah. Oh, you already have it downloaded. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, I think. 
think the USB stick is going to be the fastest thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's on. It's right. Oh, got okay. it. Yeah. Let me let me check this. So we'll do it. We'll do it. You know, sneaker net style. That's what I prefer anyway. So, yeah. Maybe mine is just slow. Maybe it, I'm the only one. Um, does anyone else want to get a copy of this before I continue on? <coughs> yeah. And maybe while that's going around, um, I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi. I'm going to just cancel this. because. Um, so I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi to make sure that whatever the network is that I'm on isn't that subnet. And I'm going to use Ethernet at this point to connect uh, my Mac to this um, this Wi-Fi network. Uh, and I just realized, uh, what did I do with my? I need one of these Thunderbolt connectors. Did I leave one on the in my backpack? Yeah, there it is. Thanks. Yeah, I don't know. Apple decided like Ethernet was uh, optional. You need an adapter to do it. So. Um, if anyone needs one of these, I, I can I can lend it to you. Uh, so let's see. <laughs> yeah, the Rana has no. Does your They did it. So it could be thinner, I think. Yes. So um, what I've done just now is I, I turned off my Wi-Fi. Um, I plugged the Ethernet in uh, between my Mac and the, the device, the router. And I went to 192.168.1.1. Um, and the password is just admin admin to get on. And there we go. So this is, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't read Mandarin, so I don't know. What to but I can kind of imagine. I mean, if you've set up a router before, yeah. you've probably seen something yeah, exactly like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're learning something. Here. It's good. Um, and I've done this a couple times, so I know that it's the last menu we want, and then it's <laughs> the third option. <laughs> um, and really, you know, there's there's a website that. The documents like how to do this. You can just like search for it. Um, really, what I did was I just looked through all the menus until I found this. Like, if you've seen like a file upload interface before, you, you can probably like recognize it. Um, so basically, we can just you know click on this without knowing what the page <laughs> says. <laughs> um, so we're gonna we're gonna go to that that uh, download. Is it, a, is it a problem that it's occupy here dash r two? It's not, yeah. Okay. So that's that's an issue on the USB thumb drive, but this is actually just a copy on my um, on my machine. Okay. Um, so what we need is just these files, and yeah, there's a couple variations here. So uh, the the MR3020, that's the the slightly larger English language version. The 703N is the one we're doing, um, and factory is the firmware we want. That's starting from like the factory defaults. Um, so I'm just going to hit open. And whatever this may be okay. <laughs> and then okay again. Um, so there it goes. It's doing something dot dot dot. Uploading, maybe. I probably says uploading. Um, and this is this is just gonna go through for a while. Um, at some point the router is gonna reboot itself. And uh, this web web page is gonna try to reload itself to take over with the new firmware. Um, but what this software doesn't realize is that we switched out to an entirely different system. So at the end of this process, we're actually going to get an error message. It's just it's just going to break, um, but that's expected. So um, when you see that, don't don't despair. Um, the expected behavior at this point is uh, we're just going to wait for a bit, and then this light is going to go uh, dark, 
and then it's going to start flashing. And once it goes solid again, that means OpenWRT is available and it, it's restarted. And that's about halfway there, um, just getting WRT on it. Open WRT, I should say. Yeah, sure. Yeah, if anyone, yeah I, I feel like I kind of skipped around there. So um, at this point, just kind of see if you can get to the point where your, your uh, router has been flashed. And in a moment, this one will get the error message. So you should end up on an error message at the end. Uh, and I'll go around and, and kind of help people along and answer questions. Oh. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's expected.
Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. That's my, that's my regular job as I build websites. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, how did I get into this? I I mean, it was a project that I did up in the Catskills in a, a small town that didn't have very good internet. And I was building like uh, media rich websites that were stashed at the, like in the towns. Um, and this was part of an artist residency. Uh, and this, it happened like right before Occupy. So. I was already kind of doing that same kind of thing. Um, but I got, I don't know. I, I guess I started messing around with the routers and decided I should put like situated websites. That was, yeah, that was the core idea. Okay. Yeah. Oh shoot. That doesn't look like the right file. <laughs> I think maybe it's because uh, it's only four megs, it should be 128 megs. Mine is 49. Yeah, that's not right. Huh. <laughs> yeah, th this stupid image file. Uh, so it's a let's see if I can generate a new one. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat a little bit, and I'm gonna regenerate this off dot image file, only because I think um, the one that was getting passed around might not be the right thing. Um, this is only four megs, so. So I think I just managed to create a new ops.image file. Um, the two commands, uh, these are kind of low-level commands, um, but they are, bless you, dd, um, like that, with a bunch of weird options, and then make fs, like that. Um, you don't need to know these, but if you did want to generate it yourself, it's a lot faster than waiting for it to download. 
Um, so maybe what I'll do is I'll put this onto the USB thumb drive into this data folder. This is where this needs to go. Um, and then I'll pass this back. I don't know who this was originally, but. Um, oh, maybe it was ours. Did everyone manage to um, get to the, the error page? Looks like you're on your way there. <laughs> it's where the error oh, page is the yeah, end result. Can you drop that on the drive? Yeah, totally. So this one, this one should be ready to go. Yeah, this one should be ready to go. Yeah. So we're um, we're almost there. Uh, I just before we move on now, I want to I want to sort out the op dot image thing, which um, was kind of the the most difficult part of this whole process. So um, let's see. I I have a copy of it, and I think two other people will now have. Got a copy. You have a copy. Yeah. yeah. And it's the right size, right? Yeah. Where? Did, where did well, I got the one. Oh. Yeah. yeah, this one is what I was using. <coughs> so we have an extra thumb drive if anyone needs it. <laughs> oh, maybe that's right. Now I'm short of thumb drive. <laughs> How did that happen? Uh, maybe I'll just reformat this one. Because this one's already set up. We actually don't want to. Um, so I'm going to quickly reformat this and then copy those files over again. Um, so this will just be kind of like a review to prepping the router, or prepping the, the thumb drive, I should say. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'll copy this guy over, and then I'll go to my downloads, copy this guy over, wait for those to go. Um, I promise it gets more fun at, you know, at some point soon. <laughs> I'm sure there are. I actually don't know much about that. But I mean, we've all probably experienced situations where so there was a question, um, you can jam Wi-Fi, right? And I think, you know, we kind of all endure kind of a low level jamming in crowded apartment complexes in New York City. Uh, I'm guessing something more extreme along those lines would have the same effect. If you just like, so one of these radios can actually set up multiple networks. And you can have name collisions, like you can set another one up with the same name. I think doing that might be a good way to jam Wi-Fi, but this isn't something I've actually tried, so. Uh, we have someone who knows how to do it. Nice. What software would you use to do that? Okay. 
Yeah, that is such a pattern with the internet. It was built um, with people's good intentions in mind. <laughs> yeah, it was an academic kind of design. Um, and unfortunately, Occupy here is pretty trusting also. It's not, um, to the people in your nearby vicinity, it actually expects them to behave well. And um, there's probably ways that you could lock it down on your own, but, um, in the spirit of Occupy, it's like trust first. So just to get that out there. So uh, the last thing I'm going to do here is, you know, I just copied these files onto the thumb drive. Um, first thing I'm going to do is rename this. Get rid of that R2. And then I'm going to move this to the data folder. Yeah, question. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> All right. Um, you guys cool over there? You guys might be ahead of us, actually. Uh, so the next step is I'm going to eject this thumb drive and I'm going to plug it into the router. Um, this has occupied it here and the off.image file in the data folder. It's kind of a mouthful. Um, and so, and now I'm going to try to log into it for the first time. Um, and to do that, we're going to use good old Telnet. Um, no SSH yet. SSH would expect you to have set up credentials on the machine. So, Telnet is just what it does by default. Like, as soon as you install OpenWRT. So, you just do Telnet, same IP address. Um, note, my Wi-Fi is still turned off. I am connected by Ethernet. Um, and you should see something like this. Um, now, it's likely that the, the way you're set up right is to start with isn't ready to actually run the bootstrap script. Um, and the way I'm going to find out is using a command called df. And df shows which file systems are available. Um, and I can see right now that it's it's missing one of them. It needs another one called opt, slash opt. Um, and that, that's not here. So I'm going to reboot it and see if that fixes it. Um, you just use the command reboot. You can also just remove power and power it back on. They should have the same effect. And my router now doesn't have a light on. And it should start flashing. Now it's flashing. Um, and when it comes back up, I'll, I'll tell that in again and, and see if the disks are there yet. All right, so my, my router started stopped flashing its light. Um, I'm going to try telnetting in again. And I'm going to run that same df command. Let's see if now we have, and we do. So we have two, two file systems. Um, so USB is obviously just what we put on the USB stick earlier. And ops doesn't really have anything on it yet. But it does have this lost and found folder which is something that Linux does by default. If you see lost and found, you know it's, it's good to go. Um, so the slash opt is where it's going to install all the dependencies that the software needs to run. Um, basically, uh, OpenWRT doesn't like to use FAT32 for things like system libraries. Um, it just lacks the necessary like sim linking and file permissions just work differently in, in FAT32. This is kind of a low level 
concern. So you don't need to worry about it too much, but it's important that we do this df command and, and just make sure that these two things exist. Um, and then finally, I'm going to go to USB, occupy here, bootstrap. And I'm hitting tab for those of you who might be new to the command line. Tab completion is like huge. I recommend strongly use it. Um, there's a, and then there's a file in here, install.sh. And maybe before I run that, I'll just show what's inside. Um, there's a series of folders, step one, step two, step three. Um, and each of these is kind of like layers of dependencies. So the things in step two folder depend on the step one folder and, you know, and so on. Step six and seven are more like system configurations. And this script, install.sh, we can take a look at it. Um, it basically just runs this install command one after the other. It's pretty dumb. It's not, it's not a very like sophisticated shell script at all. And then it does a bunch of symlinking, um, copies some config files, and generates a, a GPG key. I should say we're not actually using these GPG keys yet, but in the next couple of releases, I'm in, in anticipating doing that. Um, and then it restarts some services, and, and that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. Um, you should be able to just do dot slash install.sh, and First thing is it's going to ask for a password. So I am going to type in a weak password for now and should get going. This, this process will take a minute or two. Does it matter what the password It doesn't. No, I mean, so this, this password is important that you remember just so you can log in later, basically. Um, I don't know that there is one actually. It'll complain at oh, you that it's yeah. weak, but it'll accept it. Yeah. I my standard practice is to run a script that generates them because I don't like to have memorizable passwords. Yeah. But I mean, you can do it. However, um, when you generate the first password, <coughs> what do you do with it? Um, I use a program called Yojimbo. Oh, we just, just run yeah. So these are like all of my passwords. Um, like this, you know, has a, it's kind of like one password, but it's, um, it's an app that runs separately. Um, you know, exactly. Yes. <laughs> it slows everything down, but it's, it's a good kind of slowing down, I think. Wait, you enter a password to get your other password. Yeah. Does that make, but, but then what about that one password that you need to know? Um, that, that one I remember. <laughs> yes. So that it's turtles is. all the way down. But isn't that, idea. <laughs> is that is that not a weakness? Like if you it totally is. Yeah. Does it then work? Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it probably should be two factor. It should be something I have and something right. I know. But um, I don't have one of those little key fob things. So yeah. So this is still running. Um, it's generating some GPG keys. Uh, it's almost done. It's restarting services. Um, in a moment, it's going to start the Wi-Fi up, and we should see a couple of new Wi-Fi networks appear in the, in the room. Um, so that's it. Um, you should you'll see a different um, MAC address here in the in the finishing screen. This is the one that you're going to want to connect to. I mean, you can connect to the other ones, of course, but the one you just set up is is this one. It's specific to this. MAC address. So I'm going to turn this on and see what networks we have. There we go. We have at least two extra ones in, in addition to the one we saw earlier. Um, it's funny, these two are very similar. EC172F9B. Wow. I didn't know MAC addresses were that close. <laughs> From the same match. <laughs> yeah, that's that's weird. Hopefully, no two routers have the same MAC address. Just ask a question. Is Adam yeah. Fidel here? Adam. Adam. Is Adam here? Adam. Okay, his name is Adam. Okay. Cool. All right. <laughs> Feel free to let me know when I'm running out. Yeah. So. 
mine ends in BA. I'm going to connect to that one. I think it's this one here. Um, so the first thing, whoops. The first thing I want to do is just like try going to occupy dot here. And that's not working. <laughs> um, I mean, it could be anything. And theoretically, it would work. But for some reason, mine is not working. That's very strange. Try it. Mine's Yours is working. Hey. What did I do wrong? So maybe I'll debug this for a second. Um, oh, you know what it is? Is my I had earlier set up my Ethernet to be manually configured. We're going to want to use DHCP. So this is actually kind of a good demonstration of like how the captive portal works. Basically, there's a DHCP server running on the router that assigns my laptop its IP address. And this is all stuff you probably have never had to worry about before. Like if your network is set up right, it just works and you would only look at this if something was broken. Um, but the, the upside is this DNS server that got assigned, which is again the router, this, this is configured to resolve any request to any host name back to the router. And so it kind of funnels all traffic back to Occupy that here. So if I go to Facebook.com, um, it won't work. Okay. All right. Um, and this, this does have, uh, there is one limitation in that HTTPS traffic doesn't get resolved the same way. Like, um, because SSL attempts to um, create a valid identity for each host name. Um, it won't redirect properly, so we always want to try non-SSL uh, to do the redirection. There we go. There's already content on here. It's amazing. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, this is this is lacking. I should also say this is lacking the library that I installed on the in the exhibition. Um, that's also kind of a coming soon thing. Um, I want to make it easy for people to share libraries of articles and content, um, but for now it doesn't it doesn't have that. Um, yeah. That's a good question. So I can maybe what I'll do is um, I'll go through the process that you would use to to add to the library, um, and there's like one line that's commented out basically that I'm gonna uncomment. Um, and that's under, oh, am I not? I guess I need to SSH in. So this is actually, this is useful. So once you finish your Telnet connection and you want to get back onto it, this is the command you would use. It's SSH root at 192.168.1.1. And I'm going to see a nasty warning message here in a second because I've already set one of these up before. And it thinks 192.168. Oh, maybe I haven't. I must have deleted that. Um, Sometimes you'll see something that's like, warning, warning, this identity has changed. Um, if you see that, don't worry about it. It's got an easy solution. Uh, okay, so we're logged in. I'm going to go to the USB drive under Occupy here, app, and I think that's where it is. And it's in a file called setup.php. Um, there's just one line called setup library that I'm going to uncomment. Um, and in the next release, this will, this will happen out of the box. Um, but what that's going to do is when I reload the page, it's going to add that menu item for me. So now I have a library. Of course, I haven't added any content to the library. Yeah. So we're going to wrap up in five minutes. I want to leave time for questions. So um, maybe before I continue, I'll, I'll just see if there's any questions. Did, they, did everyone get their router to work, by the way? Um, so yeah, I'm going to add something to the library here. Uh, I'm going to add PDF. So let's see if I find some non-embarrassing PDFs. Uh, okay, so some RFP that's on my computer. I'll add this just arbitrarily. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to I'm going to shut my router down. I'm going to just remove power. And then, and then I'm going to remove the USB. You should always take the USB out when the power's off. It's kind of good practice. Um, and I'm just going to transfer this into a folder called import. And that kind of is enough to get it to work. Um, maybe I'll do an article too, like a, a web page. Um, 
I'll use the internet to get a web page because those two processes work differently. There's uh, a way to download articles through the readability API, which removes all the web page user interface. Um, and I built a little tool for that called library. Um, and you just drop a URL in there. Um, one story that just came out was about how Tor was compromised. Um, so sort of, yeah, not, not quite. Let's see if I can find a good article about that. Bird the diverge had that. Okay. There we go. Okay, we'll use the verge article. That's good. All right, so I'm going to copy this URL and drop it into my little tool. So at some point, this will be more seamless. But this is now generating a JSON file that I can grab. Um, this is the file that I want to use to import. So I'm going to put that on my desktop. So these two files are two different things. One's an article and one's a PDF. Um, and I have my USB drive. Uh, and that's going to go in a folder called import. Just take these two files, copy them over onto the thumb drive, and I'll reboot the, the router. With, with our new import content. Um, there we go. So we wait for that to boot up. And while it's booting, any questions before we call it a wrap? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to talk a little bit more of that about that in my talk. It's um, my approach. So there's been some recent news about this. Um, John McAfee kind of came out with his new startup. He's you know famous for both making McAfee virus protection and also kind of going crazy and moving to Belize. Um, I don't know. So his project is a little bit similar to what I'm doing. He has a much more technically sophisticated approach, which is kind of like what you're describing. I think mine is really technically simple. Um, and I, it's going to rely on GPG, GBG, <laughs> I can't even say it, GPG encrypted emails as its transport, which sounds strange, but it's something that anyone can set up. I mean, basically what it'll rely on is an email inbox that the routers will send email to and check email from um, while they're on the internet. And I know this sounds different from being totally off the internet, um, but I think using the internet simply to transfer encrypted messages between the routers is going to be the best, like, fastest way to make it valuable to people. Um, you won't have to use that if you don't want to, but I want to make it at least possible. Um, so th this isn't just like a, a little island that you try once and never come back to. That's, that's kind of the idea. What's that? <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I, I, my router is started up. I'm going to, I'm not seeing it though. I think it's BA, is that like the last two digits? Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. All right, and so I'm going to reload this. Still nothing there, but if I add this special import equals one, then, <laughs> wow. It brought a lot of other things in. I don't know. I don't know how this happened exactly. Oh, you know, I think it was synced. I actually have no idea where these came from. Did my PDF make it? That is so weird. Uh, huh. Yeah, so I, maybe the, I can mention the other thing that um, it uses is like a JavaScript mechanism where it backs up the contents of the database into your browser, and then when you reconnect, it uploads them to the next router. I think that's maybe what I just did. I think I might have just transferred from the other one. I'm not sure, though. Um, in which case, I'm, I should be glad that it worked. But I think this one didn't work. This was the article that I wanted to upload. Anyway, um, I 
think that might be it. Um, thanks for bearing with me in my like sort of not quite baked uh, workshop. <laughs> there were some problems, but I, it seemed to actually work, so I'm, I'm happy. Um, and definitely feel free to get in touch with me. There's some stickers. Um, if, if any of the stickers ran out, I have more. Um, and yeah, I hope to hear feedback from you guys. Thanks. Okay. Um, it'll definitely get posted to Occupy here about what he is trying to sell them. Yeah, I think for $30. So, um, thanks.